A Business Subjects and Ideas Guide Chapter 1 Some Business Subjects Agriculture Business Contact the local county extension service office of the USDA. The major books are Directory of American Agriculture and Bibliography of Agriculture. Try number 338.184 or HD1918 at the library for books about the agriculture business. At the library, go to 630 Agriculture 631 Farming 632 Plant Science 633 Field Crops 634 Orchards, Small Fruit, Forestry 635 Horticulture, Garden Crops 636 Livestock and Domestic Animals 637 Dairy and Related Industries 638 Insect Culture 639 Non-Domesticated Animals AAEA.org Agricultural Economics ActionAid.org Farmers Aid in Asia AGBioIndia.org AGRIKRS.com Agrifest.com Canadian AG Festival Agriculture.com AgrilinkFoods.com ASAE.org Agricultural Engineers ASA-CSSA-SSSA.org slash personnel comma American Society of Agronomy, Crop Science Society, Soil Science Society ADENET.org ACDIVOCA.org, Helps People Farm AGENFO.com AGRIMARK.com AGRIVENTURE.com AGRIPLUS.NL AGCENTER.com ag-biz.com agdays.com basic office information first off you must decide whether to have a home office or an office in a commercial building because of an overabundance of commercial office space in most urban centers you should be able to find office space cheaply but if you have a large need for easy access from the public consider first and foremost location if it's a large office building you might get business from the other employees there as well as from the customers from the other businesses located there. Look in the phone book under real estate, commercial, or office space for leads. Check out the ads in your local newspaper. Just as you check out a house you're renting or buying, check the particular office yourself. Look at the lighting and your space requirements, garbage disposal, access, parking, etc. Shop around a bit you might find a real good deal. One option in a partially vacant building is to offer your landlord the service of showing prospective tenants around the building in exchange for reduced rent. If you plan to sit in a chair all day long, get a good chair with padding and back support. Organize your space to maximize efficient workflow. If you're setting up your office at home, don't do it next to the living room where everyone who walks past has to pass you. You need to be away from traffic to get work done so do it in a quiet place. Buy used furniture and equipment either by looking for leads in the newspaper, in the phone book under furniture, used or checking out thrift shops in your area. If you don't have a computer, you should seriously consider buying one even if used. Computer software can help you with word processing, record keeping, inventory, accounting and forecasting. Check out MS Word, Quicken, Access and Lotus software at your local computer store. You could even take courses at the local community college at night. Once you learn, it will help you out a lot. You could get on the internet or hook several computers in your office up into a central mainframe called a local access network, LAN, or intranet. If you will be doing a lot of correspondence, get a good word processing program which in addition to text, has desktop features such that you can create pamphlets, booklets, newsletters, etc. Buy a laser printer. Don't waste time with inkjets. The cartridges are too expensive and if you change the ink on your own, it's always a mess and never a guarantee that it will work. Do not buy a dot matrix printer no matter what. They're ridiculous. Don't buy a typewriter. Buy a computer to type your stuff up instead. You might need a photocopy machine, fax machine, and a printer. 
there are three-in-one machines made by companies like Hewlett-Packard, Panasonic, and Canon. They could save you lots of money. Check them out at your local office products store like Office Depot or Staples. If you want quality, buy separate machines. There are three types of photocopy machines, portable, desktop and floor model. Many companies are in this business. Xerox is probably the best for advanced machines. There are lots of used business machines out there. Check your phone book and newspaper ads. Go to your post office and ask for information about business mailings. You can get free priority mail envelopes for priority mail and discounts for bulk mailings over 200. Ask about extended zip codes and metered mail for business. They have special equipment to speed things up for businesses. You buy the equipment for barcodes from the post office and save on time and postage from then on in. If you have a lot of parcel mailings, ask the carriers like UPS or FedEx about volume discounts. Do your research on answering machines. You can get a good one with 50 or so slots for voicemail. Pagers and cell phones are cheap but can be a nuisance. It's no fun to be too available. Look companies up in your phone book or check out ads in your local newspaper. Try number 651.3 or HF5547 at the library for information about how to run an office, do secretarial work and administrative tasks. HomeAutomationTimes.com HomeOfficeLife.com IdeaBook.com IdeasAtFRBusiness.com slash org Quicken.com slash small underscore business smartcomputing.com soundproofing.org soundproof your home office the-office.com business standards slash industry standards there are standards in several facets of any business some government regulated others regulated by the trade and professional organizations of the industry and still others common sense as good business practice for safety there's the osha.gov for labor, there's the Fair Labor Standards Act, DOL.gov. Every state has a weights and measures standards departments. In the manufacturing field, the universal standard for good products is that everyone is exactly the same, a high-quality product that you can't tell apart from the next one. Every industry develops minimal basic standards for safety and optimal function and they become the standards by which the industry operates. Call up your local libraries and ask if they have standards and specifications for manufacturing industries. Some reference books are A source book on standards information, education, access, and development. Standards and specifications information sources, a guide to literature and to public and private agencies concerned with technological uniformities, galegroup.com, 800-877 Gale. There's a worldwide standards service on CD-ROM which covers the standards for most of the world. Businessstandards.com CSA.ca, Standards Department, Canada AssistDocs.com slash search slash search underscore basic dot CFM comma the official source for military specifications and standards. NIST.gov slash SRM comma standard reference materials, SRMS NIST.gov provides easy access to a wide variety of measurement and standards laboratories operated by or affiliated with the National Institute of Standards and Technology. ANSI.org, American National Standards Institute. NIST.gov slash quality hyphen portal dot cfm comma quality portal. .sb.daps.dla.mil, information about military specifications and standards from the Department of Defense. ISO.ch ISO.org, International Organization for Standardization. IEC.ch, International Electrotechnical Commission. SCC.ca, Standards Council of Canada. WQMD.org, World Customs Organization, HS Codes, Harmonized Coding System. AASHTO.org, American Association of State Highway and Transportation Official. ANSI.org, American National Standards Institute API.org, American Petroleum Institute ASHRAE.org, 
American Society of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers. ASME.org, American Society of Mechanical Engineers. ASTM.org, American Society for Testing and Materials. DISA.org, Data Interchange Standards Association. TIS.EH.DOE.GOV slash TEDS, Department of Energy. EIA.org, Electric Industries Association. Standards.IEEE.org slash index.html, Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE. ITU.CH, International Telecommunications Union. NFPA.org, National Fire Protection Association. NISO.org, National Information Standards Organization. NIST.gov, National Institute of Standards and Technology. NSSN.org, National Resource for Global Standards. UL.com, Underwriters Laboratories. Library.umain.edu slash science slash standard.htm comma standards for all industries. ANSI.org, American National Standards Institute. National Institute of Standards and Technology. Gaithersburg, Maryland, 20899. 301 975 2000. NIST.gov. National Technical Information Service. U.S. Department of Commerce. 5285 Port Royal Road. Springfield, Virginia, 22161. 703 557 4600. NTIS.gov American National Standards Institute 1430 Broadway NYC 10018 212-642-4900 ANSI.org American Society for Testing and Materials 1916, Race ST Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19103 215 5400 National Standards Association 1200 Quince Orchard Boulevard Gaithersburg Maryland 20878 800 638 8094 301 590 2300 Directorate for Engineering National Science Foundation 1800 G St NW Number 1126. Washington, D.C. 20550. 202-357-9774. NSF.org. International Organization for Standardization. Case Post Daily 56, CH 1211. Geneva 20, Switzerland. 41-22-34-1240. National Bureau of Standards Center for Manufacturing Engineering 301-975-3400 Business Aviation Info You might need a private plane at some point in time. Noplaninogain.org Business Travel Info Whenever possible, make all your trips, even if they are really vacation trips. Serve some aspect of your business so you can deduct the cost of them from your company's profits. This can be done very often if you are in business in which traveling is a necessity, such as import slash export. If you are a travel agent, you will be invited by airlines, cruises, hotels and resorts to travel or stay with them as their guest. They hope you will then send your travel agency customers to them. This can work also if you are in a business or occupation like advertising, public relations, or writing where you can give them free publicity in return. The government wants to help you do more business overseas. Before you go, contact the Department of Commerce, doc.gov. They will arrange for you to meet people in each country you visit who are in your industry and related fields. If you play your cards right, these potential business associates will wine and dine you and act as warm hosts in their native countries. USAToday.com has a section on business travel in its money column. The Wall Street Journal occasionally has a tracking travel column in the marketplace section. NewYorkTimes.com probably has the best Sunday travel section around. 
try number 910.202 or G156.5 at the library. abt-travel.com, American Business Traveller Association. ctbusinesstravel.co.uk, Business Travel Management. Topics.net slash business slash travel hyphen tourism. abt-travel.com, American Business Traveller Association. AIRLINES-ONLINE.com ATT.com slash business underscore traveler BizRate.com BizTravel.com HeathBusiness.com Health insurance plans for employees working or traveling outside their home country BizTravel.com 800-835-6483 BizTravelClub.com BusinessFairBuster.com BusinessTraveler.com BusinessTrip.com BUSINESS-TRIP.com ExecTravel.com Expedia.ca Expedia.com 800-397-3342 GetThere.com IBM.net slash phoneint.html Infobel.be slash infobel slash infobelworld.html comma world telephone directory. Josentme.com. OAG.com, online airline schedules. Publications.usa.gov slash CIC underscore text slash travel slash business underscore overseas slash travel. Teleadapt.com, info about electric power, internet service, telephone service etc. in foreign countries. thetrip.com travel.state.gov travel.yahoo.com 888-709-5983 trip.com 888-484-3874 tvc.com slash europe comma business travel europe usatoday.com business travel section worldexecutive.com WSJ.com, Business Travel Section Business Travel Planner Official Airlines Guide OAG 2000, Clearwater Drive Oak Brook, Illinois, 60521 630-574-6000 800 Dial OAG Fax, 630-574-6530 Quarterly Magazine Business Travel News 1. Penn Plaza NYC 10119 800 447 0138 Business Traveler International 51. East 42nd ST Number 1806 NYC 10017 212 697 1700 IRS.gov 800-829-3676 Booklet number 463 Travel, Entertainment, Gift and Car Expenses College Dropout Business Biographies en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash david underscore orag en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash richard underscore branson en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash andrew underscore carnegie en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash john underscore d dot underscore rockefeller en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash henry underscore ford en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash steve underscore jobs en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash walt underscore disney en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash john underscore paul underscore de joe ria en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash barry underscore diller en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash bill underscore gates create a company video profile hire a video production company or make a video on your own about your company then post it on your company website videoprofile.net a video production company in dallas TX. NVIDIA.com. Infomercials OLUTINs.com. 
Hiring.monster.com slash recruitment slash video hyphen profile dot ASPX comma let an employment video help you reach potential job candidates, providing job seekers with an insider's view into your company. Kwistvideo.com slash company profile videos dot HTML comma Toronto, on ecetera.tv MaximizeVideo.com VideoProductProfiles.com Video profiles of companies, products, and customers. ProductionHub.com HartfordBusiness.com slash news13697.html comma featured video profile companies. IMPathNetworks.com Video networking products. Company profile, product information. Blog.linkedin.com slash 2008 slash 03 slash 20 slash company hyphen profile. 5min.com slash video slash general hyphen electric hyphen 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 video hyphen profile hyphen 170532672. Matrixvideocom.com slash about hyphen us slash company hyphen profile dot ASPX comma offices in Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Regina, and Saskatoon. Icom.co.jp slash world slash company underscore profile slash video. DVTVproductions.com. Rossvideo.com slash about hyphen Ross slash company hyphen profile. YouTube.com, type in company names. Orbitproductions.com. Mashable.com slash 2011 slash 07 slash 06 slash Google hyphen plus hyphen businesses. Panopticmedia.com TVV.co.uk slash video.htm CorpShorts.com DelveNetworks.com slash company slash overview comma company profile Benihana.com slash about slash video comma company profile video Desktop Publishing Desktop publishing refers to the ability to print out all your business correspondence including pamphlets via your computer. There's good software out there that can help you achieve this end. ABSSI.org Adobe.com Comptext.desktop Desktoppublishing.com Degusa.com 800-255-8800 Digitalforte.com DTPJournal.com Flashweb.com Houtsign.com Ideabook.com Jumpola.com Publish.com Facility Management Info If you have a big building, you have to hire facility managers or facility engineers to take care of it. AFE.org Facilities Engineering Allfacility.com Automated Facility Growth Corporate Facilities Group.com En.wikipedia.org Slash Wiki Slash Facilities Underscore Engineering en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash facility underscore management en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash facility underscore management underscore system facilitiesnet.com facilitiesplus.com facilities and telecom management fmc-pc.com facility management consultants icivilengineer.com slash software underscore guide slash facilities underscore management idcfs-ch2m.com h2m hill facilities management ifema.org international facility management association maintenance software.info numarasoftware.com facility management software theocbnetwork.com slash global underscore consultancy dot hdm today's facility manager dot com vfa dot com vifa facilities management and capital planning solutions association of higher education facilities officers 1643 prince st alexandria virginia 22314 apa.org facilities management International Facility Management Association 1 East Greenway Plaza Number 1100 Houston, Texas 77046-0194 713-623-4362 Fax 
713-623-6124. IFMAHQ at IFMA.org. IFMA.org. Information Management. If your company is big, you have to hire people to organize all your paperwork and knowledge. This is the field of information management. ACA.archives.ca, Canadian Archivists. AIIM.org, Information and Image Management. AIIP.org, Association of Independent Information. Professionals. ALA.org, American Library Association. Archivists.org. ARMA.org, Records Management Association. BFMA.org, Business Forms Management. Bibliodata.com, How to Do Research. Burwellink.com, Information Professionals. Institute. Clearinghouse.net. Commerce.net slash directories slash directories.html. ICA.org, International Council of Archives. Infotoday.com. Marketingbase.com, 800-544-5924, Information. Brokering Mentor Program. Napo.net, Professional Organizers. Newschool.edu, 800-319-4321, Course About. How to Do Research. Onlining.com, 800-248-8466, Database. SIP.org, Society of Competitive Intelligence. Professionals. SLA.org, Special Libraries Association. Tionet.net.au slash Armacama Records Management Australia. American Society for Information Science. 8720 Georgia Avenue. Number 501. Silver Spring, Maryland, 20910-3602. 301-495-0900. Fax, 301-495-0810. ASIS at ASIS.org. ASIS.org. Association of Independent. Information Professionals. 234 West Delaware Avenue. Pennington, New Jersey, 08534-609-730-8759. AIIP.org. Burwell Enterprises. 3724 FM 1960W. Number 214. Houston, Texas, 77068. 713-537-9051. Fax, 713-537-8332. Burwellink.com. Contact them for information. Database Magazine. CD-ROM Professional. 11, Tannery Lane. Weston, Connecticut, 06883. 800-248-8466. Gale Books. Book Tower. Detroit, Michigan, 48226. 800-877 Gale. Galegroup.com. Information Brokering Courses. 800-544-5924. Information Industry Association. 1625 Massachusetts Avenue. NW. Number 700. Washington, D.C. 20036-202-986-0000. Infoindustry.org. Information Professionals Institute. 46, Hiller Drive. Oakland, California, 94618. 510-649-9743. Fax, 510-704-8646. Courses. National Research Bureau, Inc. 424, North 3rd ST. Burlington, IA 5201. 319-752-5415. Working Press of the Nation. Volume 1, Newspaper Directory. Volume 2, Magazine Directory. Volume 3, Radio and Television Directory. Volume 4, Feature Writer and Photographer. Directory.
Volume 5, Internal Publications Directory. Searcher Magazine. 362, Lakeside Drive. Foster City, California, 94404. 800-419-0313. Informationaccess.com. Special Libraries Association. 1700, 18th ST Northwest. Washington, D.C., 20009. 202-234-4700. SLA.org. Operations Management slash Operations Research. Stated simply, Operations Management is just trying to make the production and customer service end of the business as efficient and good as possible. It's a standard business course in college. They teach you the regular stuff which is the classic efficiency approach fathered by Frederick Taylor, the father of scientific management which is to be as efficient as you can without regard for the worker, versus the human relations approach championed by Elton Mayo which is be good to your workers and they will be good to you. There is the theory X versus theory Y theory of people, do you trust your workers and expect good work from them or do you think they will cheat you and slack off as soon as you turn your back? The truth is somewhere in between and different for every individual. Theory Z is a team-oriented approach. All operations can be analyzed in terms of five factors. Capacity. Scheduling. Inventory. Standards. Controls. The six MS of capacity are. Methods. Materials. Manpower. Machinery. Money. Messages. In essence, you have to treat workers well in order to get them to perform well. Use the latest, best equipment. Find good suppliers who supply you with quality products. Design the production process to be as efficient as possible. Produce enough inventory such that it sells quickly but not so much that is taking up a lot of space in the warehouse. Always monitor the product for quality. Always try to improve quality. Set work and safety standards and stick to them. Some of the topics covered are as follows. Productivity. Production. Operations strategy. Decision making. Forecasting. Research and development. Product slash service design. Computer aided design, CAD. Location planning. Inventory management. Analyzing proposals. Facility layout. Work systems. Job design. Aggregate planning. Material acquisitions planning. Scheduling production. Project management. Customer service. Quality assurance. Quality control. Inspections. Books about operations management are at number 658.5 or TS-155 at the library. You should be able to find a textbook at a college bookstore. bls.gov slash oco slash ocos 044, operations research as a career. orsoc.org.uk. cio.com slash research slash scm, supply chain management. forecast.umkc.edu slash vtours, virtual tours of organizations. efetters.org slash ioe. informs.org. ISO.CH slash ISO slash N, International Organization for Standardized Addon. MapNP.org slash Library slash OpsMGNT slash OpsMGNT. MHE.com slash Uzines S slash OpsCI slash POM. Tutor.ms.unimlb.edu.au. Twig.info slash Tommy. Institute for Operations Research. And the Management Sciences. 901 Elkridge Landing Road Number 400 Linthicum, Maryland 21090-2909 800-446-3676 Fax, 410-684-2963 Informs at informs.org Informs.org Several booklets about careers in math and Operations Research Military Operations Research Society 101 South Whiting ST Number 202 
Alexandria, Virginia, 22304. 703 751 7290. Fax, 703 751 8171. Moore's Office at AOL.com. Moore's.org. Mathematical Association of America. 1529, 18th St. Northwest. Washington, D.C., 20036. MAA.org. Operations Management Education. And Research Foundation. POB 835991. Richardson, Texas, 75085. 214 368 5393. Operations Research Society of America. MT. Royal and Guilford Ave. Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. 301 528 4146. Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. 3600, University City Science Center. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19104. Siam.org. Physical Layout. The physical layout of the retail, wholesale, manufacturing or service space can be maximized to be of the greatest advantage to you. There is a certain art form and science to it. For retail layout, according to the conventional dudes, the game is to maximize the usage of space while keeping an aesthetically pleasing look to project a professional image. A dollar store will have stuff strewn all over the place to give the impression of a discount store with good deals on lots of stuff while an upscale boutique will try to look cool, swank, fashionable, neat, prim, elitist. The clerks will all be impeccably dressed and will give you a fancy-looking bag when you buy whatever it is you're buying in order to reinforce to you that you're special and exclusive, not a bargain basement consumer. There is a certain vibe to the way you package your store so think it through rather than just haphazardly laying your stuff anywhere. Think about the shoplifters too. Don't put your expensive, small things in a spot where they're easy to steal. Lay your store out such that with mirrors and cameras, you can see everything in the entire store. Understanding consumer psychology will also help you set up your store. Put the basic necessity items at the back and the high-end luxury products at the front so that the customer has to see them when he goes for his necessities and possibly buys one or two spontaneously, the proverbial impulse purchase. The placement of your shelving and display units will play a role in determining what customers will buy or not bother with. If they can't see it, they won't buy it. Try to have all products from knee level to eye level. Visit a few stores. Note their layouts and learn from them. There are professional design consultants around who organize layouts for stores. The Wholesale Layout Wholesalers must concentrate on developing a different layout arrangement from retailers. For practical purposes, they want a layout that makes it easy to receive, store, set up and deliver product quickly and easily. They have wide aisles and big, functional shelves to enable them to use forklifts and pallets. Manufacturing Layout When considering the manufacturing layout, you want to be as efficient as possible. Minimize wasted movement. Have the delivery doors as close to the production bay as possible. Finished product should be completed near where they will be stored and slash or loaded onto trucks and shipped out. The service layout depends on the type of business. If you run a car repair garage or lawn mower repair joint, the customer doesn't care what the place looks like as long as you do a good job but if you run an image service business like a spa, hair salon, etc., the customers go there to feel special and be pampered so give them what they want, a cool looking place. Service Business Service is all about helping people get something done as opposed to buying a product. It's often about buying a product and getting it installed like a car transmission, toilet, a straight service like lawn care or repairing something like computer service. Service businesses generate more money than straight retail businesses for the overall economy. Service was once considered the lowly work the dumb, dirty vocational guys did while the white-collar guys were the ones with the real power making all the decisions but since the advent of computers and high technology in the early 1980s, the service guys are now considered the ones with the brains and the white-collar guys are a bunch of expendable bureaucrats pushing paper around. 
a good service company knows what it is. They have a vision of excellent craftsmanship, a written out code of conduct, a teamwork attitude, a desire to do a good job because they have pride in their work and are paid accordingly. Take the work to a level of professional craftsmanship but don't cross the line into fancy art because the mainstream is one dimensional. They want a good quality, basic job for a good price, not fancy frills that cost extra. Culture the fine balance of doing great work without being artsy fartsy about it. Try to make the work fun and inspiring while keeping your eye on the bottom line. Do a good basic job and earn a profit from it. After you do a big job or a great job, Take your work team out for supper, have a barbecue at your place, take them to a strip bar or something like that. If you're in a field like advertising, architecture, or a custom gardener, sure, do some far out, wildly original creative stuff that you can show off in your portfolio but if your business is installing electrical wiring, don't go fancy. Stick with a basic, functional job. Don't let the customer rush you. Tell him you have to do a quality job. Good service is all about attitude, having a good attitude with your customers and a teamwork, sharing creative attitude with your workers. Look at your clients and workers as teammates who can sink you or help you grow. Whatever you give them, they give back to you. Good customer service gives you more business because the customers tell other people about you. Give them bad service and they will badmouth you. You are defined by the people you sell to. Don't just look for the bargain basement clients, the ones looking for a deal. Go for the big time commercial, industrial clients. Do a quality job with the small clients, develop a reputation then solicit the big ones for their business. Underbid your competition. Be aggressive about it. Every commercial building needs a cleaning service. I know one guy who started small and within seven or so years, he was a millionaire managing the cleaning of about 10 commercial buildings. He went out and told everybody he would clean their buildings better for less and he did it. He bought his cleaning supplies in bulk at a low price. If you have poor customers who don't pay on time or otherwise try to suck you in, get rid of them. Stick only with good clients. Bad clients will bring your workforce and your company vibe down. People want to work in a good atmosphere with good clients. Plot out your strategy to start a service business as with a product line. Find your niche. What are the needs of the community? Check out your competition if you have any, study them and go one better. How will you create good service for your customers? What will be your strong points and your weak points? What will you do to keep one same high standard of quality for every service you perform? Try to develop the attitude with your service business that you are not just going around fulfilling orders, doing routine jobs. Try to culture the attitude that you are going around doing interesting, new, creative projects. It's more fun that way rather than just doing jobs to run out the clock. Try to encourage this attitude in your workers. Look at the job as you and workers' personal signatures. Drill it into them. They must be proud of the work they do. It must be high quality every time. You're there to serve. Communicate that message to both your workers and customers. Find the latest technology for your workers so that they feel like they're on the cutting edge of your industry not to mention they will do a better quality of work. Try to get big jobs slash projects that you and your workers can develop creatively and work on hard to do well to develop a sense of team pride about your work. Service is generally dealing with people so you need pleasant, clean, and courteous frontline workers who are genuine extrovert people persons. People generally want things done well, quick, close to home without much hassle and as cheap as possible. This is your battleground on how to perform a service well. Free delivery or at-home service will definitely bring you more business. Try to offer flexible hours since most people aren't home during the day. Offer your carpet cleaning service up until 10 o'clock at night and you will have a competitive advantage over your competition. Banks should offer no fee checking. Car repair shops should offer overnight service if they can get the parts the car needs. 
The big difference between products and services is that products have a definite cost formula where profit can be added for overhead but services mostly labor with no set cost so the customer often feels ripped off and doesn't know if he's getting a good deal or not. It seems atrocious to pay lawyers, plumbers, and computer repair people $50 or more an hour. Some are definitely rip-offs but some are way worth it when they have the expertise to figure out your problem immediately and fix it. Shopping for a service is like playing Russian roulette. You never know when you're gonna get ripped off by high fees, shoddy service, and outright deception when they lie to you saying the repair job was more complex and time-consuming than it really was. When you find good service people, stick with them. By the same token, if, as a service business owner, you rip customers off, they will eventually feel it, won't come back, tell their friends and report you to a consumer protection agency but if you provide good service and give them a break in the price, they will be repeat customers which is good for some services that have to be performed regularly like lawn, furnace and hair care. If customers aren't satisfied with the service, you have to do it until you get it right, offer a money back guarantee or offer free service the next time. These calls are subjective. Sometimes it doesn't matter how well you do, the customer is still not satisfied. Treat your customers well but if there's a complaining asshole in the bunch who you've done good work for but is still not satisfied, you have to play it by ear. Decide when you've done your part and had enough. If your business is something like contracting slash home improvement jobs, one way to suck the customer into being part of your team is get him to spill his guts about his creative ideas for the job. Write them all down. Do the job as he wants it and he will come back with more ideas which means more money for you so the lesson is don't automatically come in with the standard talk about a standard job. Tell him to tell you exactly what he wants now so you get it right. Pry it out of him. People are often reluctant with their creative ideas. They think you the professional, know best but assure them you want their input and feedback. Make it like a collaborative project of quality craftsmanship. A service business is totally dependent on your reputation for quality service so you'd better be good if you want a long-term business. Find your target market, locate your business in a highly visible area then advertise any way you can, yellow pages, newspaper ads, door-to-door -door flyers, coupons, etc. Have a vision and policy of quality service that all your workers and customers can plainly see on a poster on the wall and on the backside of your work orders. The golden rules for service businesses are the same as for any other business, location and advertising. The yellow pages is one of the cheapest, best ways to advertise. You must get a display ad over and above just your name listed. If the phone book has a coupon section for businesses, get a coupon in it like $10 off. In short, the key is to get them in the door then treat them well and get them as repeat customers. You don't necessarily have to undercut your competition by much but don't be sleazy when it comes to time and offering explanations and advice. I stick with my computer service guys because they talk to me and answer all my questions. They service my computer exactly the way I want it and they do it. They're knowledgeable, they know the trade. They sit in that little shop all day long fixing computers. I respect them for that. The point is to give your customers a little deal whether it be in educating them or charging a flat fee for a job even if it takes longer than the hour normally called for. Goodwill is the name of the game. Offer a guarantee. If you treat the first time customer right, he will tell his friends about you and keep coming back. Make your prices low enough so that people will check you out. You can always raise them later. Try to perfect your service to keep it as cheap but high quality as possible. Remember, if you sacrifice the quality in your service, you won't get repeat business. Give customers what they want with a smile and a pleasant disposition throughout the process. Everything comes down to your face-to-face -face interaction with your customer and the quality of your service. Just remember that. Do it well and you should be alright provided your service is something people need. Don't try to be all things to all people. Do your one service well and keep it that way, as the undisputed expert of what you do. Your reputation is everything.
it's all about quality of service such that the customer likes the good job your workers do who you've trained to be professional and do quality work as opposed to hiring some guy who went through vocational school, give him a truck and a list of customers and tell him to go. The professional service business has a written code of conduct which the employees are to follow. Little things score big points like a professional looking work uniform with a name tag on it, no smoking around customers, always be polite to customers, being there on time, not rushing jobs, calling the customer if there's a delay or postponement, etc. The goal is not to just please the customers such that you get a reputation as a hot shot in your neck of the woods and develop a good customer list but have good workers who you pay well enough to enjoy the work, have pride in it and want to do a good job. When you create this kind of buzz about yourself, you attract the talent in your industry who will want to work for you, you get to pick from the cream of the crop and they further elevate the quality and reputation of your business. Quality control is to try to make the production process so exact that every widget comes out with the exact same high standard of quality. Try to develop a method to do your service such that every job comes out with the same high quality. Write this method out. Give it to your employees to use as a checklist. In a nutshell, tell people you're there to help through your company's vision statement on the invoice and do it. Hire good workers who know how to be pleasant with customers. Always strive to do better quality work. Mentor your workers so they learn on the job. Tell them all to find one aspect of the job they like and specialize in it. Provide the opportunity to either be promoted or get raises for good quality work. In this high-tech world, honor your geeks. Try to culture a happy, energetic working environment. There will be bad days. Stay calm, work through them quietly without saying something you will regret later and try to keep your sense of humor. Never do anything to compromise your integrity. Be prompt in responding to people, especially new prospective customers, even if you are busy as hell and don't exactly need a new customer that very minute. This is where professionalism comes in. Advertise a service business just like you would a product business. Keep learning about the technology of your business. Use what you like. Do your own research, design, and development. Books about service businesses are at number 658.4012 to number 658.812 and HD 9980-81 at the library. Slotting Slotting fees were created by store managers when they realized that different companies were all competing for the limited shelf space they had for any product. Consider soft drinks. 30 years ago, every company had a handful of brands. Then diet soda came along and a lot of other flavors including hybrid juice slash pop combos but all through this, the supermarket has basically the same amount of shelf space relegated to soft drinks so some of them started a bidding war offering shelf space to the company that paid the highest slotting fee, a fee simply to have access to put their product on a certain amount of shelf space. In extreme cases, one major brand wins out and the other brands don't get any shelf space in the store but in general, all brands are in the store. It's just that the major one or two brands pay the store for more shelf space than the other brands. That's the basic concept. If you're a retailer and you have a couple of major competing brands of a product that sells well, you could ask them each for a slotting fee in order to make more money. All kinds of stores do this. Record companies pay record stores in order to have their CDs set up in prominent displays at the front. Bookstores do this too for new books. UPC code slash barcode. UPC codes are a series of lines running parallel to each other on most consumer products nowadays. The lines are of varying width which the electronic scanner reads then signals to the computerized cash register what the product is and how much it costs. If the scanner can't read the UPC code because it has been mutilated or damaged, there is a number is printed below the UPC code which the cashier keys in manually and this will give a readout of the product. UPC codes come in all shapes, sizes, and colors depending on the color of the container. They are stamped on virtually every type of material, aluminum cans, plastic wrappers, cardboard boxes, etc. The electronic scanner scans the code, 
registers it in the cash register for that particular sale and the sale is also recorded in the main computer for inventory, accounting, and tax purposes. The big advantage is that the store does not have to price each individual item with price tags and labels. They just put a price sign up for every different product they sell and don't have to put price tags on individual items. This cuts down on shoplifting by changing price tags. The store administrators can set the price or change the price of anything with a UPC code simply by going into their central computer and changing the price which will then be registered by all the cash registers in that network. When the scanner accepts the code on any product being scanned, it will beep. This signals to the clerk that the code is good and has been registered. On most models, the clerk is looking for the light on the scanner to change to a certain color or blink along with the sound of the beep to tell her that the code has been registered and she can move on to the next item. You need a barcode on your products if selling them through retail stores. United Packaging Council Uniform Code Council 8163 Old Yankee Road Number J Dayton, Ohio, 45458 uc-council.org Get a UPC code for your product, send for free pamphlet. Chapter 2 Alternative Business Ideas Incorporating from Panama I attended a seminar that could be interpreted in one of two ways. 1. An honest pitch that American business owners should internationalize their businesses for a number of reasons like too many regulations on business in the U.S. Too much taxes. The law itself, which makes some types of business dealings crimes when they are simply just what good business people do. Legal liability to lawsuits. 2. An elaborate ad to make money. The guy making the presentation seemed sincere. First, he showed how Panama was not a typical banana republic because it had a history of being a world trading country. It now has one of the biggest ports in the world and most merchant ships in the world are legally registered in Panama as their home port. Don't forget it is the home of the Panama Canal, a vital part of world trade. Since the Panama Canal was built, Panama has basically been a colony of the US so now, as an independent country, it has a good infrastructure. It is a business-oriented country with a stable economy, with a society made up of yuppies and peasants looking for low-level jobs, cheap labor pool, and very few regulations on business hence very little paperwork. No office. If you can't afford an office, you can still run a successful, professional-looking business. If you want to avoid business regulations and taxes, set up an invisible business. Get a phone number, fax, email etc. but not with your home address but with a mail drop address, you pay a mail forwarding service x number of dollars per month to receive all your mail and forward it to you. Get an answering service if you want. On your business card and in your direct mail advertising, make your pitch something like, no waiting in lines, we come to your office or home. Don't hire any employees for several reasons, the first is all the taxes and paperwork you are supposed to do, secondly, if employees know you're cheating the tax man, they might squeal. Thirdly, employees can steal from you or file lawsuits for sexual harassment or discrimination against you. Instead, hire independent contractors or temp workers through an ad you place yourself to do all your work for you. Look for people who you can tell don't care about doing business off the books. If you sell stuff, Work out a drop shipping deal with the manufacturer slash wholesaler which means you go out and get orders and for every order you bring him, you get a cut and he fills the order and ships it out himself. These days, with a website, computer, laser printer, fax machine, cell phone and a mail forwarding street address as opposed to a postal box, you can look like a prosperous company and still be invisible. Telecommuting slash telework slash work at home for someone. You can work any job you want from anywhere as long as you have the technology. How about a guy who was a nature nut and a hermit so he built a house in the middle of the woods powered by solar energy and he writes newspaper and magazine articles from there. It doesn't matter where you are, you can develop your projects anywhere, send them electronically to anyone you want and they can. Either print it out themselves or you could send it all on hard copy through a fax machine. 
telecommuting is basically moving the work to the workers instead of the workers going to work. It's a situation where a worker can work at home on his or her computer and fax slash email slash FedEx or drive the results to the office. In some cases, do the work on a website which the main office can access anytime by calling it up. Telecommuting is a situation where people do at least some of their regular work at home rather than going into the office. The deal between management and worker is not so much hours worked as job gets done. In exchange for being allowed to sit around at home in your underwear if you want, you're expected to produce good, final product quality work. The technology is there to send faxes, emails, and even do work on a website that the company can access and download. The key to success in a telecommuting agreement is to have a clear meeting of the minds with the boss. He knows what he wants. You know what he wants and you deliver it to him consistently. There are minor considerations such as Who pays for faxes, internet bills, business telephone calls, office supplies, etc. What hours should the employee be available for the manager to call if he needs him? How will overtime be calculated in, if at all? How often will the employee check in electronically and physically for messages? How will most correspondence be carried out, telephone or email? Do the regular conditions of employment stay the same? Will the boss have the option to sometimes drop by the house to talk to the worker? If you can swing it with the boss, all the better. This is the hard part. The work has to be suitable for telecommuting. Mostly paper work. And craft slash skilled work without big machinery apply. If you write up reports, fill in forms, type up forms or do research, you don't really have to show up to an office at a prearranged schedule to do this. In fact, most people are happier if left on their own to do their work with the net result being that they're more productive. Telecommuting is currently usually a part-time deal reserved for senior people in a company who've been around for a while and earned the privilege but increasingly, if an individual proves themselves within the first few months of work and has children like many mothers. With careers, why not let them work from home most of the time then come in to discuss their work with the boss? A lot of different types of work can be done at home so a telecommuter can stay home up to four days a week, do all the paperwork, research, etc. then show up one day for briefings, meetings, etc. The big thing about working at home is to set up a home office away from the main flow of the family with all your equipment, computer, fax, phone, email, video phone, etc. And make it so that you can work comfortably without being distracted. If you're really cool, you can set up a network such that your home computer networks into the company computers at work or simply set up a website where you do the bulk of your work that you can access from any computer anywhere and work on it. Just put a password on it so no one can get in but you. I used to drive down the I-95 highway all the way from Maine down to Florida and I always got caught in either a go-to-work or leave-work rush hour in one of the big cities and to think that some people do this every day like living in southern Jersey and commuting all the way up to New York just to make a good living and live in a decent community. If your work is largely paperwork working on projects or contracts without much contact with people, if you can do the job just as well at home as at work, talk to your boss. Ask him if you can try it out one or two days a week then as you prove yourself, ask for more time away. Like three to four days a week. The main rules are. Know exactly what the company wants from you and do it. Be prompt. Return all phone calls and emails immediately. Get your work done as quickly as possible. Speed is everything in business. If you're a parent, you will have to set up in a private workroom and at times get your kids a babysitter so they don't bother you. Save all the work you do to prove how productive you are in case anyone at the office questions the viability of telecommuting. Pop into the office physically now and then to keep the personal connection, feel the place out and get some feedback about your performance. If your work is largely paperwork working on projects or contracts without much contact with people, if you can do the job just as well at Home is at work, talk to your boss, ask him if you can try it out one or two days a week then as you prove yourself, ask for more time away. Like three to four days a week. 
you can check out a magazine like entrepreneurmag.com or smalloffice.com. Using telecommuters often has many advantages for the business owner. You save money on them using space, energy, and supplies at the office. Good workers will be more motivated so you will get more production out of them. If you want to outsource, you could hire independent contractors who do whatever jobs you want done but chances are that for IRS purposes, you probably won't be able to change an employee into the classification independent contractor because one of the criteria is that an independent contractor generally works for several people, not just one. You could hire independent contractors straight out without bothering with employees for those jobs. You tell them what to do then they are responsible to do the work at home and bring you the final product. You don't have to mother them, deal with them at the workplace, provide a big workspace for them, waste electricity, water, a parking spot on them, etc. Telecommuters generally do better work from home than at the workspace. There is no problem with absenteeism since they work at home. Good employees like it so they're liable to stick with you rather than bail out to another company. Telecommuting is good if you have workers who travel a lot for the job like traveling salesmen and good for disabled people. In my opinion, a disabled person has more to prove than an average person so they will do better work for you. Just let them do it at home. Lately the big kick is saving on gas emissions if you don't drive to work. Another advantage for business is the morale of the workplace during hard times. If you're downsizing, the employees get scared and unproductive because they're worried about getting laid off. Telecommuting gets employees away from the pressure and the gossip of the workplace. Telecommuting enables businesses to keep control over their workers but generally gives better results because the work is done from home. Another option in telecommuting is that a smaller office is located some distance away from the main office set up for the convenience of the employees to do their work and perhaps go to the main office occasionally. For instance, if a big company employs a bunch of people who live in a small town 30 miles away or so, they might set up an office there to make everything easier and create happy workers. As a matter of fact, it really doesn't matter where the work gets done as long as it gets done. Because India has many software techs. Many companies contract their work out there, they do it and send it back over the wires. The same situation can work for you on a smaller scale. Companies want happy employees and one way to make them happy is to let them telecommute as long as they do the job. They save time and money on driving and the planet gets less polluted. Everybody's happy as long as the workers are responsible people who do the job. If you work from the home, you should be able to claim some of your equipment as business equipment used for work, business phone calls, etc. on your taxes. Telecommuting only works for self-motivated people. Slacker type procrastinators who play if the boss is away will not make good. Telecommuters some bosses won't go for it because they will be jealous of the guy at home while they have to be there and they might say that they want the employee there in case they need him immediately for something. High-level managers typically can't commute because they have to be there at the office but the guys who do the paperwork and the projects don't have to be there, they'd probably be more inspired at home. Telecommuting is good business sense for companies because they save on office space. If somebody is telecommuting, they don't need a full office at work only a cubicle or a shared office. If you're looking for good workers in certain fields like software development or architecture, you can hire them from anywhere. They can work at home and send you the products so you can attract the best workers without them having to uproot and move. If you want to commute, write out a proposal to your boss explaining the benefits to him and you. Start with one or two days a week and work up from there. Your job must be one that is able to be done at home. If he says no at the beginning, don't give up. Keep doing good. Work and tell him you want to work from home a few days a week. Bug him about it until he gives in or fires you in which case screw him anyway for not letting you telecommute when it was no skin off his ass. If he agrees, make up a little contract saying you will be telecommuting and he's not responsible for your medical insurance even if you're on company time at home just to keep him happy. 
you will probably have to buy your own equipment but that's fine, claim it as an expense on your taxes and you will have it in case you ever strike out on your own or switch companies. Technical Writing, Software Development, Programming, Webmaster, Website Creation, Graphic Arts and Systems Administration are just a few of the technical jobs that can be done online. Telecommuting is not for everyone. Some people can't handle the isolation away from the office, others love it. Some people would rather go to work and be in a social setting than to sit at home and work. See what fits you. Be wary of jealous co-workers when you go to the office for your few days a week. If it doesn't work, you can always can it and make the worker come to work like before. It could be the individual not the type of work. Some individuals simply don't make good telecommuters but are great workers at the office. Governments want telecommuting because it reduces traffic. Check your state laws to see if there's anything that might help you argue for. Telecommuting with your company. If you're a business looking for telecommuters to work for you, go to freelance worker websites where you will find people offering their services for hire. You might find a book on telecommuting at number 331.25, number 658.312 or HD 2336.3 at the library. Telework websites slash telecommuting websites slash work from anywhere websites. Telework.gov usajob.gov slash infocenter slash work env slash arrangements dot asp. tdigest.com the telecommuters digest. Working from anywhere.org, the Telework Advisory Group. SELF EMPLOYMENTKEY.org. RATRACERebellion.com, jobs that let you work from home. QuintCareers.com slash telecommuting underscore options dot HTML. TELECOMMUTE CAREERS dot com. TelecommutingJournal.com. YoYurata.com. American Telecommuting Association. Working from Anywhere.org, International Telework Association and Council. Telcoa.org, The Telework Coalition. 2020TECH.com slash WW4F slash index.html. 2WORK-AT-HOME.com. Abibo.com. AT-HOMEWORKS.com. att.com slash telework busymoms.com businessknowhow.com careersfromhome.com cba.ziga.edu slash tc96 slash resources slash articles cbdd.wsu.edu slash telework slash overview.html comma rural telework project global economy provides new opportunities for jobs in rural communities .com mommies.com dpa.ca.gov sample telecommuters agreement eei.org slash esg slash na slash tele eeoc.gov slash fax slash telework.html en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash telework escapeartist.com slash tele slash commute eto.org.uk europe telework Flexjobs.com Gilgardon.com Homebasedwork.com Homebasedworkingmoms.com Homejobstop.com Homeworkers.org Homeworkers.org, Independent Home Workers Alliance ITA.DOC.gov slash HRM slash telework slash policy dot HDM ITD.UMICH.EDU slash telecommuting Jala.org Jobs.teleactivities.net Jobsandmoms.com Jobs-irland.com slash telework Kidvr.state.ky.us slash programs underscore services slash telecommuting slash could slash index.html Langhoff.com LiveOps.com slash revolution.html comma a short list of leading companies embracing the work at home teleservice model. Mompreneursonline.com Moneyfromhome.com Moneyfromhome.com slash jobs.htm
mewmother.com slash tilde d fleming slash dm flinks opm.gov sample telecommuting agreement packbell.com slash products slash business slash general slash telecom portajobs.com quintcareers.com slash telecommute underscore jobs dot html rhracerebellion.com selfcouncil.com book about telecommuting smallbusinessadvocate.com slash content slash suites slash hb underscore teleworking slash index dot shtml smart2.svi.org slash projects slash tcommute slash webguide smartoni.svi.org slash projects slash tcommute slash tcguide sohojobs.org sohojobs sybar.com slash d slash telecommuting slash telecommuting tofmunkainfo.hu hungarian telework job board tdigest.com tdigest.com telecommuters digest telcoa.org the telework coalition telecommute.org telecommute-jobs.com telecommutemagazine.com telecommuting.com telecommuting.org TELECOMMUTING123.com TELEWORK-CONNECTION.com TeleworkRecruiting.com TeleworkTools.org TJobs.com 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 JOBS-TELECOMMUTING.com 4TELECOMMUTING.4 INYTHING.com TJobs.com slash jobops.shtml treadmillworkout.net slash job hyphen opportunities hyphen for hyphen telecommuting.htm TRYADS.com triads telecommuting jobs UTH.TMC.edu Houston Health Science Center has YM.com WORKAHOLICS4HIRE.com WORKAHOLICS4HIRE.com WORK-AT-HOME.org WorkCenterPlus.com WorkingFromAnywhere.org, International Telework Association and Council, ITAC WorkingFromHome.com WorkingZolo.com WorkOptions.com WorkOptions.com slash telecom WorldWideWorkOthome.com WorldWideWorkOthome.com WSDOT.WA.gov slash choices slash work.cfm comma article on telecommuting You can work from anywhere.com Association of Part-Time Professionals 7700 Leesburg Pike Number 216 Falls Church, Virginia, 22043. 703-734-7975. Monthly newspaper, ads for part-time. Professional jobs. National Home Office Association. 1828 L. St. N.W. Washington, D.C., 20036. 800-664-6462. NOAA.org New Ways to Work 785, Market ST Number 950 SF, California, 94103 415-995-9860 Fax, 415-995-9867 Info at nww.org nww.org Advocacy Organization for Flexible Working Conditions